right, guys, welcome back. This is going to be a cool, cool tournament. As you already have guessed, we're playing a 64 player Vintage Cube Vegas qualifier. And uh, this is going to be my last shot in the chamber um, for this week, for this, which is week seven. And uh, yeah, you know, there aren't, there aren't any guarantees that I can hoist a bunch of more qualifications for the next week, which will be the last week eight. Um, so this is just me thinking a little bit about how cool it is to play these tournaments. I'm trying to stay in the moment, trying to do my absolute best, but I'm also very, very thankful and very privileged that I have the opportunity to play a cool tournament that brings me so much joy, so much excitement, um, so much expectation. And that's definitely the case. I, uh, yeah, I love playing these and I hope it shows when, uh, when I'm drafting the, the pressure is on. I want to do my absolute best. Yeah, this is just the the magic I love to play. I love this initiative from uh, the Magic Online team, Ultimate Guard, and uh, I'm not quite sure. Maybe that was just a collab between those two um, that basically made this come together, but it is for sure one of my favorite ways to, to play Magic. Just the dream of Vegas, right? The dream is alive. Um, but time is also running out, so it's now or never if I want to... Cash, cash in my ticket. Six people are already qualified, and uh, yeah, huge congrats to those guys. What an accomplishment, winning so many matches in a row, playing Vintage Cube, going to draft the, the Paper Cube in, uh, in Vegas. So uh, yeah, without further ado, we're going to be looking at our opening pack and our pod. I'll quickly scan to see if we have any name players. When you scroll these, you always have... Very, very high level of play. So let's see. Um, I have so I have Burning Trees and I have just Alice that I that I know of. And uh yeah, other than that, let's get let's get to it. So great start. I'm starting off with a Mox Ruby here in a decent pack. Well, I guess Mox Ruby mana drain, and from there it's like a huge drop off. You have like Narset, which is um I mean, you know, it's a fine card but you're disappointed with it as your first pick. And you can say the same about Jetmere's Garden. So uh, yeah, incredibly happy with taking Mox Ruby. And I'm going to take note that I just passed, you know, the two next best cards in the pack are blue, which, you know, could be some tiebreaker later on that I don't really want to fight over blue or I'm going to do my best to cut blue. Any of those two, really. Um, not much to say here. Opening on a Mox is absurd. The colors on the Mox, sure, we can get into a little bit of details there, but in general, if Mox ends up being on color, that's just bonkers, but it's only going to be a small tiebreaker. So let's add the Mox to the deck, and now we look at a pretty mediocre pack here. Okay. So Get Action Probe is a card you can just put in any deck, and it's going to be fine. Um, then the question basically becomes if I'm looking for any of these duels. So d Bayou... I don't know. I'm not too hyped about that duel before taking anything else. I would rather take Pest Infestation. Pest Infestation is a card that will wreck artifact decks and just be fine against the rest and even good. Sometimes you have stuff like, I don't know, Gaius Cradle, Skull Clamp, like cards that basically reward you for going wide so the one ones can be better than their face value. Um, Season Pyromancer is not strong enough of a red card that I want that, so I'm actually going to go for Pest Infestation. I could have gone, you know, Elite Spellbinder, Probe, Shorikai, but I think Pest Infestation is also that kind of card that, let's say I'm playing, I don't know, Red-White, I'll look to splash Pest Infestation, so that card is quite good. So, this pack is a lot better. This card has, like, a handful of cards that's better than the alternatives from some of the other packs, so Let's look at those. Prismatic Vista, great fetch land, gonna be good in any deck. There's like some corner cases where you end up, you know, base green and you don't wanna actually play a basic of your splashes. Then we have Wooded Foothills. Wooded Foothills matches my Mox and my Pest Infestation. Again, matching the Mox is not, you know, that important, but it's not nothing. Then we have Marsh Flats, which I just think is a worse Wooded Foothills since I have a green card and a red Mox, so we can't really consider that. Um, so for me, it's between Vista and Wooded Foothills, and I think I'm going to go for the OG fetch here, um, since I have so much time to match it up with the correct duel, and I'm going to be looking to have green man in my deck regardless. Um, there is some corner case where I end up, I don't know, 
blue black control and then all of a sudden this wooded is not very good um but okay let's take wooded foothills here now what best card in this pack is chain lightning chain lightning is decent with what i already have so I like that chain lightning good in my mocks back red green is a good archetype okay that's not bad so what's the next best card in this pack it's very contextual but i think it's like inspiring vantage but that card is specifically a boros card so um it's kind of hard to evaluate that i um, mean you know, i like the cycler auto war and stern scolding fine you know role players um but yeah, chain lighting, pretty good. Bread and butter card here for red. What do we have in the next pack here? Pretty weak pack. That's the first thing I'm noticing. Really not anything to write home about here. So Eternal Witness is a card that's good to have some more, you know, durability out of your red green deck. It's not really an aggressive card. It's more like a card that helps you stay competitive in longer games against higher card quality. If I take the Epicure, I'm banking on, you know, basically mono red aggro being open, which I'm not sure I like. Um, I think I'm leaning towards Temple Garden to stay open in the Naya Realm or Raging Ravine. And I think the most valuable here is Temple Garden. Um, Temple Garden is a card that allows me to potentially go Boro slash Pest Infestation. It's a card that allows me to go, you know, bigger Naya deck. Um, since it's a fetchable, it gets the edge over Ravine and, and, and over Eternal Witness. So, yeah, let's see if that pays off. Um, so this pack is interesting. I actually really like Springheart Nantuko. That card is actually quite strong. I already have one fetch. I did pass up two other fetches, though. Um, what else do we have here? Mind Twist and Deluge for black. Doesn't really go well with what I already have. So I think I'm between Magda to double down on the red or spring hot nantuko to double down on the green and i think i'm leaning nantuko here pretty interesting choice to have i will say I'm taking nantuko let's see if we get rewarded um i mean pyrokinesis is not bad it's not my favorite second red card to pick in a draft days is probably the best card in the booster not quite sure we can leverage that fact um Vengevine is Kind of replaceable as a four drop green creature. It's like worse questing beast, worse oddity. Pyrokinesis can destroy some matchups. Um, maybe that card is fine. I don't love that pick though, but I'm kind of staying within the red green aggro space. Okay, okay. This is a good sign for us because the two best cards in the pack is mo th those are most likely Hex Drinker and uh, Bone Crusher. Uh, and I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Hex Drinker here. I really think the card is solid. Good turn one, good turn ten. Um, that being said, Bone Crusher is also cool, so not a bad word spoken about that card. Um, I do end up wheeling Gold Span Dragon, which can be a good curve topper in decks like this. Um, don't mind that. I could take something like Lush Portico to you know power the White Splash, but I think if there's a serviceable red or green card, which right now is on color, I just take that. Um, Trumpeting Carnosaur and the Shoba Brawler are not very exciting, so maybe I just take Bayou. Let's see, what would I realistically play a black with Mind Twist gone? And I can't rem maybe I just take this one. Is this double? Yeah, this is like a red land that's also white. Okay, let's take that. I guess it, it, it's we take the Savai Triumph, it kind of complements our Temple Garden, so we can play like. Wow. Awesome cards wheeling here. So we can play like Plow, Fourth Yalingas, or whatever if we're lucky to open those. So I don't even know what's better here. Bristly Bill or Flame Slash. I really like both. Um Bristly Bill is a card that makes your lands into um, you know, relevant. I already have the Nantuko, so maybe in the fetch land space. Taking that over Flame Slash. Yeah, I'm actually gonna try taking the Bristly Bill. Pretty Sick choice to have here. So now I can go for a talisman, which doesn't do anything. So haste reanimation. I'll just eight pick the virtue here. Okay, I end up wheeling the Voldaren Epicure, but we're on the red green path. So yeah, I mean a free, a free ravine is cool here. Um. So now I have a couple of cards that really want you know lands to enter the battlefield. So all of a sudden. Fetches go up in my evaluation. Um, and yeah, let's see. Let's see what kind of cards we're working with. Um, the red cards right now are, you know, decent, but not incredible. Um, 
So let's say I could easily be like another color when it, next to green, right? Let's see about that. Um, Omnath could be too much, but Phoenix could be irrelevant. Omnath could be too much, but Omnath also care about, cares about land drops. I'll try it. Okay, the Vengerine, I don't think I'm going to play, but I mean, let's see. We have a lot of options here. Um, as I open Source of Plowshares, which is going to be tough to pass. There is a flash in the booster. I have zero blue um, lands, and I have zero, you know, pieces, basically. So I'll need to work on the mana and find the fatty potentially work on some redundancy. And I think with all of those that stuff combined, we're supposed to leverage the Temple Garden and the Savai Triumph we already drafted. What if Foothills makes it so that I have three white sources already built in? Um, so pretty happy with the plow, keeping the door open with the Savai Triumph. Uh, take that over Flash. What else? Not much, I guess. Malevolent Rumble, super solid. Like that card a lot. We take source of plowshares, we could pass the Orcish Bowmaster and a Johnny. That's the best cards in the pack with a long distance down to Steam Vents and Ketria Triome. Hmm. Is this where I go? Oh wow, wait, 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 wait. Survive Triome is all is also black. So now we're looking to get our splash up and running. Yeah, I take the bowmasters over a Johnny here. And I hope that is it is a light, you know, light splash, light plow, and I'm kind of staying. Staying green, if that makes sense. Orcus Bowmaster's over a Johnny. A Johnny's awesome, don't get me wrong, but Orcus Bowmaster is also incredible. There is a, here's a Triome. That Triome is very interesting to me. So, black for Bowmasters, green for the main color, and red for Chain Lightning and stuff. Okay, I think I can't... There's no way I pass up a Triome here. Uh, the next best card for me is Sentinel. Um... Unholy Heat, Honorable Mention. Let's take the Triome. So now I basically already have enough to cast both of my Splash cards, which is quite nice. Here's Oko for the full five-color experience. I don't have any blue right now, but will I get blue? And how much better is Oko than the second best card in this pack? I'm afraid it's a lot better. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think I should take Oko and... Uh, Really look for the, the birds, the nobles, and the sylvan caryatids of the world. Okay, well, Oko joins the fray. Um, unclear about the red cards right now. So I will have to find out which, you know, if I'm four color, if I'm five color, etc. Because neither of these red cards are worth splashing for, aside from Umnath. Um, but I kind of have a free mana base when it comes to red. So maybe it's like... I don't play Chain Lighting, I don't play Gold Span, I don't play Pyrokinesis, but I play Four Color Green. Let's see about that. What do we have here? We have some, you know, Tier 2 lands that I am not incredibly excited about. And we have an Ulvenwald Oddity, which is decent. The thing about the green stuff is, without the ramp, it's not that impressive. Um... Fast Bond is a card that's interesting with the Bristly Bill and the Nantucos, but is it what I want to be doing here? So let's see, what makes Fast Bond good? Stuff like Draw 7, stuff like Orser type cards, Fetch Crucible type cards. This could be a Fast Bond, I just don't think I'm good enough to take it here. Um, Oddity or Challenger, then I'm just going to take the Oddity, I feel like. That's a very high chance that Fast Bond was supposed to be the pick there. I just don't see the, the path there. Um, but let's see. Our Splash is currently some high-quality cards. That's the good thing, right? It's, um, as I put, you know, Pyrokinesis in the sideboard mentally. Um, Bowmasters, Plow, and Oko. So the main issue is... If I'm fetching and I have to choose, you know, between those, it's not going to be that fun. I think I have to take Lotus Cobra, even though, I mean, it's no Birds of Paradise, but it's a card that cares about lands, uh, so I have all the landfall guys. And it can, you know, give me multiple colors, so it kind of plays into a pretty weak pack here. I would love to play, actually, Territorial Kabu. Sneak Attack is obviously going to be good for somebody else. Still no good fixing, which is a bit concerning. Um... 
question is if Horizon Canopy is a decent enough card to pick up, or I should speculate on the crop rotation, which is basically a, I don't know, a strip mine card or whatever, however you want to put it. Um, Horizon Canopy. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess we can take it. I'm not super big on it, but there's something like Titania. Um, yeah, mainly Titania would make that card worth it, but let's see. Hmm, this is kind of a mess. I need some glue cards like Bird, Sylvan Carry at it, um, the 2 1 Hexproof, 5 mana Accelerant, something Druid. I need those for this to not be a mess. Um, mana Confluence. I mean, I guess beggars can be choosers, and I'm pretty proactive, and I have some life gain in my deck between Oko and Umnath, so. Maybe Mana Confluence is decent here. I guess I'm not really taking it over much. I think with Mana Confluence, I don't think I can play Horizon Canopy. Too much life loss, simply. Hmm. There is a chance that Gold Span and Chain Light... Well, if I'm red-green with splashes, I play those cards, right? The reason why I'm keeping the Bowmasters Plow and Oko out here is just to remind myself that I... You know, I need to solidify these splashes. Also, these cards are so good, it's unlikely that I move away from any of those. So let's see, Volcanic Island casts my red cards and casts Oko and Umnath, so that is good. It's even fetchable with Wooded Foothills. 11 and Rumble would have been nice, but I think it's better to take a duel that helps me cast good stuff, right? So one, right now we're 24 cards in. That means I'm seeing six more cards. You could get some, you know, freebies on the wheel, like wheeling an OG duel is pretty nice. Um... Some stuff that I didn't take note of at the time. Um, let's see, what do we have here? I mean, Devoted Druid, Eagles. Not a huge fan. It, it, Devoted Druid is at least, you know, a double ramp can do some stuff. Anamorphos is not where I want to be. I guess we can take Devoted Druid, but in reality, it's not that exciting. It's like taking Atlanta Ralphs, basically. It's a bit better, you know, from when it resolves, but it costs two mana instead of one, so. Hmm. I'm also setting myself up to be able to cast Nadu, which is kind of cool. Um, I think I should take the Fetchable here, even though Copper Line is also quite tempting. Um, I really want Nadu in this deck with Bristly Bill and Springheart and Antuco. Um, with that being said, somebody else could be in that deck with, you know, Equipments and Nadu and waiting for those cards, but let's see. Um, Teferi is good. Teferi is castable off of not double mana, so it's better. I think Vindicate is going to be too tough with the double splash. Touch, not going to do anything. Waterlock Grove, most likely not going to do anything. I don't know. We can take the Disenchant for the sideboard. Thespian Stage doesn't do anything. Okay, so... Pretty hard for me to pass up this Ignoble. Ignoble is a card that casts... Let's see... It does not cast Plow, it does not cast Oko, which is reasonable, right? But it does cast, you know, the red from Umnath, red into something like Chain Lightning. Tiger is also awesome, but I think the ramp, I need the ramp here. Taking that card over Taiga or Delta. Not perfect by any stretch, but serviceable. Let's see if we can pick up some of the more premier um, Man Accelerants. Let's see, how much red do I have just in my mana base right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight already. So I think my deck can support double red reasonably well. I would love another fetch to make my landfall guys more consistent. I would love a green sun zenith and a nadu to have like kind of a combo finish. I would love, yeah, basically, ooh, I get past the mana crypt here, which is... A card that is obviously great. i um, not never going to complain about that. But, <coughs> excuse me, I do have a lot of colored cards. Like, it doesn't help cast Omnath at all. And, you know, some of my other stuff doesn't really care too much about it. Um, but we have to take it because we have, you know, Oddity, Goldspan, Teferi, Test Infestation, and whatever else we're getting here. So we take that over Arid Mesa. And I'm very happy with that. Ooh, here I get Noble and Halfling. So, I guess... Let's see, what does this Noble do? This Noble helps cast Source to Plowshares. 
Oko. But the thing is, Halfling casts also Oko, Omneth, Teferi. It does not cast Plow. Um, it does not ca neither cast Bowmasters. Hmm, I don't know. I think I'm supposed to take Noble Hierarch. The Exalted can be really awesome. But it's kind of close because a lot of my splash cards are uh, Legends, so very close pick. Up next, what do we have here? Plateau is awesome, Bold is awesome. Hmm, let's count playables here. I have 10 of these, so I have 16 playables. All of these make the deck. 16 playables, that means I have, I need to get like a good handful. How much will this help with my white source count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Plateau will help with my white source count. Probably will help enough that it's worth taking, but yeah, pretty close pick. Now there's Uro. Now there's Uro. How much blue do I have? One, two, three, four. Not a lot, so probably not going to go in that direction. Headliner Scarlet is a card I really like. Maybe we just take that. I can take Scarlet. Scarlet is a good card to break through. Late, it's a good card to power out and get some advantage. And in Tomb here, somebody's going to be happy with that. Let's see. Underground C is a card that helps my double splash, Bowmasters, and Oko. What would I take it over? I mean, Rebel Master, maybe the Rebel Master is too strong with the acceleration I have going on. If I'm like base red green anyway, yeah. Okay. I think I talked myself into a Rebel Master. Shieldred. I don't think I can support double black. One, two, three, four, five. No, I don't think I can support double black. And I, I think six is just fine. Um, there is another Triome. A Triome that casts. Plow, Bowmasters, and the blue stuff. Not bad to have a blue Triome. It's not fetchable, though. I think I'll go for six here. Kind of close pick. So, what's my playable count looking like here? I have 30 minus 11. That's 19. I still have four or five to go, depending on what happens. I'm not going to get any more fetches unless it's exactly Fabled Passage. And this is a kind of deck where Fable Passage is actually quite awkward, I will say. Um, I think I just take Llanowar Elves here. I have a bunch of, like, turn one Llanowar Elves, play Nantuko, then get a token, play Build and get a counter, play turn two Rabble, turn two six, you know, turn three, four drop. It's fine without, like, it's a poor man's birds here, but that's what we have to live with. I don't think I'm going to see any more cards now. Now I'm going to see my own pack wheeling. And let's see if we get some good surprises in the here near the end. Um, it's unclear if I have enough duels for this five-color pile to work out. The triomes help a lot because the, the if I draw a triome, I basically have like two splashes covered. But yeah, I mean, I I don't intend on. Playing any planes, right? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six with Noble. That's enough to cast my white spells, I think. Cobra also sometimes count. What about black? Only have this one Bowmaster and I have a couple of Triomes. Yeah, yeah, that's black is good as well. What about blue? One, two, three, four. Eh, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Let's see. Golos? I mean, this is a deck that can actually activate Golos, but am I but I, am I interested in that? Spellseeker can only go and get Plow, so I guess I am interested in the Golos. <laughs> kind of cool when your deck can uh, activate Golos. That's just kind of a good late game that you don't need against many decks, but it's good when you do. So right now, I think I'm too playable short. If something really bad happens, I can main deck Pyrokinesis and Foundation Breaker. Bad things did not happen. Questing Beast is totally reasonable. Um, maybe the next pack is where Halfling was, but I, if I get Halfling, that's just that's too much to ask for. I don't believe it. Um, Questing Beast is 
super good. As I said, it's better than better than um better than Oddity and better than the Vengefine in my sideboard. Is this a decent Tarmogoyf deck? I only have one fetch. I'm not putting that much in the yard. I'm milling it a little bit with six. I mean, I guess I take it. I did. I will mind collapse. Mind collapse is actually a card that's very good with these hasty boys. Um, but sacrificing a land in this deck is not ideal. Maybe the Leovold is gonna be better. I'm not sure. I'm just gonna take the Leovold. May most likely as a sideboard card. Wheeling Uro and Interpreter. Is there any world I'm playing Uro here? And I'll have to skew my whole setup. I mean, I guess we can take it and worry about it later. I'll think about the thicket. Not sure about it, though. I'll think about the restless vents. Definitely not sure about that one. I don't think I play that card. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so this means I'm adding five lands and I have a deck. So this is a cool... Cool-looking deck, but... Yeah, I mean, this Mana Crypt and... Uh, Ruby really has to pull a lot of weight. So first of all, let me just check. How many may how many green sources do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need more of those. How many red do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't necessarily need any more red, which is kind of cool. Um so this is mainly gonna me be me adding like some forests and then maybe like one mountain, one other basic, and uh, then I'm gonna Submit. So yeah, there's a little bit of waiting time now until the other pod finishes. I'm not going to bore you here. So uh, yeah, when you see me next, it's time for round one. All right, welcome to round one of this nice 64 player Vegas qualifier. My opponent has Alurus, which is quite awesome. And I have this one, which I'm not too sure about. I think I'm going to mulligan this. Let me think about it for a second. So Let's say I already have had, you know, green and blue. I knew that any land would make me cast turn three Oko, but that's not the case right now. So, like, best case, I'm looking to play a game where I go... I have to get lucky on the Oko, so let's say turn three Infestation, turn four one of these. I think it's worth mulliganing here, which is always unfortunate. So what I have here, I have a pretty good hand. I have a hand that goes turn two devoted druid, turn three to fairy. So if I bottom the questing beast, I can go turn one drinker. Okay, I mean, I'm always down for curving out a little bit. Let's get this show on the road. Turn one hex drinker, turn two devoted, turn three to fairy. I think that's reasonable. My opponent can obviously break that up by killing the Devoted Druid and stuff like that, and then we kind of have to play a little bit of a normal magic. So let's say I knew my opponent had a ton of removal spells, I would hedge a little bit. There's Golos. So I guess we play Devoted, attack for two. And now with my opponent showing Wishclaw Talisman, what does that tell me? That tells me that I'm up against a some kind of combo clock here. Um, I'm just glancing over my deck that I don't have a random shuffler in the face of brain freeze. That's the first thing I'm thinking. Underground C, Mox Diamond. Yeah, let's see what the opponent has in store here. Turn three, Thopter Foundry. Holding up something. So the question is, if my is my opponent willing to go eat a uh, Mox Diamond to trade with Hex Drinker. I think I'll accept that. So I think what I should do is start by attacking. And then I can think about what to do. Um, Teferi... I mean... Teferi is probably not half bad. Can I also play the Omnath? Yes, but I need to play a land out first. Okay. Um, let's start by attacking with the Hex Drinker. I'm fine trading for the... Basically trading for the Thopter Foundry as well. I'm, which I'm not sure about, but at least I'm going to give my opponent that option. Let's see what they do about that. 
I think if I put in place for the Thopter Foundry, I can consider playing the Safari and getting rid of the Mox Diamond. I don't actually think that's bad. Wow. Okay. So my opponent is willing to trade the Mox Diamond here because I guess they're kind of soft to um, Hex Drinker moving forward. Okay. So now this can this can be a little tricky. Um, think. Hmm. I wonder what I should do here. You can play Teferi and tuck the boundary, but that just doesn't seem very. Is that useful here? Maybe. Tuck the foundry and then start drawing cards next turn, or just starting to draw now. I guess I'll just draw now. Pass. So the thing about Teferi in this deck is it's only a draw engine. I don't have much of anything to do with, you know, the untapped mana here. Here's Lion's Eye Diamond. Sort of the meek. Got it. That's brutal. So now my opponent can activate the Thupper Sword four times, and I will basically need to draw Pest Infestation very soon to break it up. Interesting. And cool deck. I mean, if you draw your A plus B combo early, it's just over for the opponent, right? So, pretty nice. Chain Lightning, not exactly something I'm too impressed with. I guess we draw with Teferi. Let's see what we can find. That card. Mm, so now, the thing about Golos is, Golos is not a card that helps uh, dig into Pest Infestation. So for that reason, I'm going Umnath. Draw. Play land. Gain four. Pass on tap two lands. My opponent goes Thobder Bananas. I have a Foundation Breaker in my sideboard. Let's see if my opponent LEDs away their hand. That'll be interesting. Let's see if my opponent LEDs away the hand. Yep, looks like it. My opponent's all in on the Stop Their Foundry train. The cool thing about that is I do have a little bit of time. I believe um, my opponent can make one more. So my opponent can attack the Teferi for five. That means I get to draw one more card. I get more life with the Umnath. You know, I... Yeah, just gaining that life is going to be valuable because there's going to be some world where I have to race, I don't know, race a lot of tokens. Land was a good draw from the opponent. Any land is like one more 1-1. One, one. Teferi probably gets attacked to one here. Can't block. Then my opponent's going to pass. Let's see if I can do it. No pest infestation there. There's Headliner Scarlet, which is usually a good card, just not now. <laughs> um, so I will note that a card like Golos will allow me to ramp in this such a scenario. So let's see. Can I do anything smart? I think I can go like this. Wait a minute. So I can go... Hmm... Play land, gain four. Golos, make four mana, play Scarlet. I think that should be my play. So play that, tapped, gain four. Golos into my second land this turn. Search, probably some kind of tap land. Is there any way? Yeah, maybe this one is good because it's digging. But fetch is making... A mana burst later. What's better? Digging or mana bursting? Mana burst is pretty awesome if I end up finding the infestation, but Hedge Maze is helping me find the infestation, which makes me doubt it. I'll go for the Hedge Maze. Four mana. Maze. Obra to the yard. Scarlet. And then I can attack for a seven. 
which isn't very impressive against my opponent's life gain. Um, also worth noting, Luris can complete the combo later, but maybe Chain Lightning has something to say about that. This is going to be tough, because now it's just one attacker onto Teferi. And I take a lot of damage. Fetch Lane would also be better for... Um, gaining life on my own turn, gaining life on the opponent's turn. But this card is digging me towards Pest Infestation. I think it's a tough call. Trying to look at the list here. I don't think I have anything else that kind of bails me out against what's going on. Um, untap a couple of lands. I'm going to take seven here and get a, lose my Teferi. When I draw a lane, it was very good. It's kind of pretty insane here. All my opponent did was draw Thopter Foundry and Mana Sources, and that's enough to beat me. Even, like, cracking a diamond to get rid of a Hex Drinker. Using Lion's Eye, discarding the hand. That's very, what do you call that? One-dimensional, but it's super efficient here. Let's see. Let's see. It looks like my opponent... Is attacking with three small guys on Teferi. They don't want a single spot removal to mess up this attack. I like that logic. Um, now I'm going to look at one extra card with Scarlet. Unfortunately, I don't have anything like, you know, um, Fiery Confluence or something along those lines. Okay, my opponent puts Lurus into hand here. Passes. So I get a card. And I get a gold span dragon. That gold span dragon means that now I can attack for, let's see, that's four plus three plus three, that's 10, that's 14. My opponent can make two chump blockers, which is unfortunately incredibly good right now. Um, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. I could also activate Golos. I'm trying to look at my deck here. Um, if I draw. Oak. Find Oko. I can turn the Thopter Foundry into an Elk. What else do I have here? I can hit like some awesome cards like tough to say what's awesome cards right now. Basically need to hit like two Haymakers but I already have two Haymakers not, well, no, maybe not Haymakers but I have two solid cards already. One, two, three one, three, four, five so I have to play the untapped land in order to play both Hmm. Yeah. Is Pest Infestation next turn even enough? That's what I, I have to ask myself here. Because I'm attacking the opponent for how much? Let's just say 14. My opponent goes to 6. Then they can kind of eat half of my life total and then block a lot. Also, Lurus Lion Side Diamond is just a free roll when it comes to making guys. This is really tough. I'm gaining four here. I have to think about that. I could also gain four here. But let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Gold span gives me a treasure. Okay. So I guess that's how we play. I go gold span. I go gain four. And I attack with the team. But I can only make two tokens, and I'm going to get some treasure here. Tough one, tough one. I have the Foundation Breaker on my sideboard, as I, as I already mentioned. Um, foundation Breaker, I don't think Pyrokinesis makes much sense, but who knows. Uh, maybe a card like Leovold is worth considering. So now the opponent can double block the double block the uh, devil. I didn't think about that. Okay, so cool play by the opponent. I, my that trade was not very impressive. Um, and now I go add two, tap that one, play six. The reason why 6 is good is that I can now play Scarlet from my graveyard um, next turn, which makes all of my guys unblockable. 
How much damage is that? That's two, six, nine, thirteen, sixteen, nineteen. Did I did I just find lethal next turn? Very possible that I just found lethal accidentally. I didn't think about this at all that my headliner scholar would die. My opponent will have five mana available now. That's enough to go to sixteen. Um, Luris, play Lion Side Diamond. Like that. That's the same. Let's see if I just randomly found lethal out of nowhere. My opponent needs a good draw step to mess that up right now. And I have the land in hand that my opponent does not know about, but they have to, you know, they have to respect. But maybe they don't have any actions with that info. <clears throat> That's such a weird interaction that all of a sudden I can play my stuff from the yard and possibly win a terrible looking game. Pretty excited about that one. Also, I am 99% sure that if my opponent makes creatures after this enters, that they are still affected. But I guess, I guess we'll find out. My opponent's giving this a good think. Land is 6 life, going to 17. Let's just quickly count how much damage I have if nothing is dealt with. I have 6, 9, no pun intended, 6, 9... 13, 16, and, okay, my opponent drew that, Lion's Eye. So now I think my opponent can gain 5 life, but they're getting hit by too much damage here. Pretty interesting. Let's see if I miss something. Draw... Bow Masters is a card that deals a little bit more damage. Not bad. One, two, three, four. Cast Scarlet. Discard the land. My opponent cannot block. And now, attack. Let's see if that works. Six is going to mill. I'm going to return a land to hand, because why not? Make a treasure. Now my opponent's going to go for it. To see if it works. Okay, so it looks like the ability is on the player. And not, like, all the creatures. It's all the creatures that the player controls, not each of those creatures. So, let's see. I guess I can yield to that one, and that one. And the opponent realizes I have enough damage. Wow. So taking one here against the Thopter Sword, very, very fortunate to find that my... I, I'm not going to say... I wanted to attack, like, plow through as much damage as possible, but I didn't realize <laughs> my guy was going to die there, so that was... Definitely not good for the opponent. Um, I want the Foundation Breaker, despite the, my opponent has Luris, so it's kind of weird. But I guess in combination with some stuff, it can be good. Let's see. Um, Pyrokinesis. Is that card good? If my opponent's on a Luris deck, chances are he's going to have, you know, cheap creatures. Um, what about a card like Teferi? The fairy seems good against their non combo plan, I guess. Or like Tarmagoyf is not really ideal. Maybe I just accept my fate when it comes to the Thopter Sword. Um, no, but my opponent also showed the, the amulet or whatever it's called, like the thing he discarded. So I think I like this swap Goyf for Foundation Breaker no matter what. And then it's kind of up to this Pyrokinesis. I'm not sure I've seen enough out of my opponent's deck to do that swap. Um, so maybe I'm just keeping it like this. And let's see if we can get more knowledge, knowledge before game three. Up a game here. Pretty excited about that. What about this hand, though? 
Ah, oh, this this deck looks so bad when I don't have an accelerant in my opener. Opponent keeps seven. I don't think this is a keep. All right, so mull the five, and I found a hand, and I guess the card Goblin Rebel Master is not impressive. I think I need my Teferi to be relevant throughout. Maybe get rid of the Nantuko. Okay, mull the five here. I play my deck does play, you know, does play Mana Crypt, so there's a little bit of help, uh, or hope rather. Let's see. Mold of five with a deck like this where the mana is questionable. Not ideal. But I don't think keeping the seven with just a couple of forests and it's it's better to, you know, spin the wheel a little bit. I draw ignoble. That's not a bad draw. Um let's see. Does ignoble enable anything turn two that Line of War doesn't? It's like Chain Lightning off the top that I need to use. It's Bowmasters off the top that I need to... Hmm. I th think I'm going to play out my next best elf here. Let's see if that pays off. Let's say that dies to Blood Chief's Thirst, Fatal Push, Edict, whatever. Okay. Voidwalker is annoying here. Um, so now I can go Cobra Ignoble. It's not that great. Obra, Hedge Maze. So now I have to remember the Voidwalker. I can't give my opponent access to um, all sorts of stuff. So let's see. Do I want that card? I do. So now I go Ignoble, pass the turn. And then next turn I can jam to Fairy. And, you know, get some cards flowing. Try and buy back the Mulligan, basically. Let's see what the opponent has lined up for me here. Lionside Diamond. Okay, I mean, let's go. Stop their foundry, sure. Academy, I love it. Is this sort of the meek? That would be amazing. Simply amazing. Nice. Getting a 1 1 out of the deal here. I love that. And Voidwalker getting in there. Okay. Opponent has a cool deck. That is not up for discussion. That deck is incredibly cool. So my opponent has three cards in hand. I can slam the Teferi. Which I like a decent amount. So if I go Teferi... White. Tap these guys. Play Teferi. Draw. Maybe I should have held up the Ignoble. I think that would actually have been better. There's some, like, Chain Lightning. Or maybe that's the only thing I can draw into. So, right now, I'm trying to make it a tough decision for the opponent whether to um, invest their whole hand. Actually, Bowmasters is another card I should have thought about. Okay. So I had some cards here I could draw. Foundation Breaker. Which is not bad, but only one mana available. So I guess I attack with a 3-2 Cobra. Uh, you can also consider attacking with Elf, but I think that's bad. Might as well attack with those two. Unfortunately, Foundation Breaker does not have Flash, so... Can't really use the Evoke here. This game is up in the air. My opponent did not sacrifice end of turn, so they like their hand. Makes a lot of sense. They have lures in their companion zone. Bad things can happen for me here. Academy Thupter Foundry is really, really scary. Here's Surin Orp, which is a Mox Sapphire at the moment because of Academy. Um, Yeah, I'm just waiting for bad things to happen to me this turn. Here's the land drop. Thupter Foundry is the card we don't want to see. That card is unbeatable this game. I will call it right now. So, the thing is, if Teferi ever hits the bin, all of a sudden my opponent has access to a Teferi via the Voidwalker, so... There's something to be said about that. Four blue. Lure is into hand. Lure is into play. Recycle the star, get a token. Love this, love this. This is awesome. It also makes my Foundation Breaker do nothing. Yep. 
Here's Chromatic Star. Here's Teferi getting attacked for four. I do get to untap with Teferi one last time here. Lurus is so good right now. My opponent can kind of go a little bit all in here to sacrifice, you know, Surinorb, Star, maybe even Thopter Foundry itself. Like, that wouldn't be insane. Because you can just replay it with Lurus, so... I might have to find Lurus removal here on my following turn. Or I could be in some kind of trouble. Also, the self-mill from 6 is a bit... Iffy against the Voidwalker. I think it starts with Lurus removal here. That is not Lurus removal. Neither is that one. Um... Hmm. I'm not sure I have, have any cool play here. Let's see. If I play land. I play Golos. Then I can also Foundation Breaker and attack. Use Golos. To go for what? Uh, let's see. I have anything but black on my lands, so maybe it's just the Proving Ground or the Survive Triumph. Let's see. I have white there, green, red. So I might need double red this game. Both of those are double red. I don't know the difference here. Quad green, I'm never going to use. Survive so Triome. Double white, is that even a thing? Double white means I can Omnath into Plow at some point. The double, that's the only double white sequence I can think about. Maybe that's fine. Um, and I may not have any, any color. Hmm. Foundation Breaker at Token, that's super weak. Um, yeah, I guess I played the six out. Hmm, 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 hmm. Back with Cobra. With Lurus going here, it's going to be a tough one. Surin Orb is a cool one. I know, I'm not sure what that tells me about my opponent's deck. If I should be thinking balance. Um, but it's definitely the possibility. It's so sweet when you get a Lurus deck together that actually, you know, when you don't make huge concessions, if you end up putting a mere, you know, three drops in your sideboard, or like, let's say you have like, I don't know, the One Ring or like some awesome cards, like three mana and planeswalkers, etc. Oh. The opponent blocks with Lurus. What is that about? Maybe my opponent, yeah, my opponent probably has some reanimation here. I don't know. Animate dead. Unearth. Reanimate. Scrapboard mutt. Sure. So my opponent has a lot of, you know, random artifacts lying around, which makes. The Thopter Foundry is super good. I really don't know what my opponent's last card is, uh, but it's obviously something awesome that they're going to cast now. There's the Unearth. It was too good to be true. Here's the Sacking of the Star to get a 1 1. My opponent can do that again. It's not looking good for the home team, that's for sure. I'll have to draw, you know, a nice hand for game three to get this guy dead. Star is back. Opponent is slowly but surely building a board. The Voidwalker is actually super annoying here. Okay. So my opponent deploys a Strix. Ancestor Recall. That is definitely something that will get you over the hump. I don't even know what would a, what a pest infestation is just a card that sure it can kill some stuff but I'm not even sure it would do anything. So Voidwalker takes care of Teferi and I take one damage. This has reach. I'm not sure my opponent thought about that, which is funny. Well, let's see. This could get lightning bolted, but this is a mistake I, I could make easily. 
Okay, so it looks like it was a mistake. Um, pretty interesting. I, I, I make those mistakes all the time. Um, I draw a Goblin Rabble Master, which definitely isn't going to help me here. I guess we spin the Golos. Let's see, top three. Hmm. Okay, I'm not impressed here. <laughs> Orcus Bowmaster sent some, some bad cards, unfortunately. So, let's see. Bowmaster onto what? This, I don't even know. The token, probably? Really unimpressive. Um, so I guess I play the Thicket out. And now, if I attack, my opponent blocks with Death Touch. I can't mill over some st stuff with six, so I guess I just pass. With Lurus, Thop the Foundry, my opponent is heavily... Oh, there's the Sword of the Meek. Okay, okay. So I guess that'll, that'll do it for this game. I don't have any outs here. My opponent's going to make a gazillion tokens, then they're going to do the same next turn, so might as well save the time here. Darn, that was a beating. So, killing Lurus is useful with Pyrokinesis in the mid-game. The thing is, I haven't seen anything else aside from Voidwalker. And what am I even pitching? Like, I guess pitching Goldspan or Omnath is reasonable, but the other cards are actively want to play, so... Unclear. I have Plow and Chain Lightning as removal spells, alongside, you know, a little bit of Oko, a little bit of Bowmasters. I think I'll be fine. I'll just, you know, have to draw a little, draw a little better to compete here. All right, game three for the marbles. The video could be over shortly, or we play on. Let's see. Um, this is this is a keep. I have turn two Rebel Master. If I draw land within my top two draws, I have uh, a follow up oddity. So I guess we. No, I don't even need the land. Actually, the devoted droid is gonna is gonna bridge me there. Um, let's see what my opponent can do. Turn one. Suran Orb is fine. This has Academy written all over it. I'm not happy about this start. I can't tell you that much. Wow. Wow, this is incredible. This is incredible. Turn 1, Academy, get Metalcraft. This is, this is absurd. This is uh <laughs> this is what dreams are made of. This is gonna be a legendary turn. I thought my hand was decent. <laughs> I guess it's I guess it kinda was. Let's see. Lurus in hand turn one. Lotus Cobra doesn't do anything. So the problem with Rabble Master is it does nothing against Lurus because it sends the one ones into the three two lifelinker. Um, a way to break this up is trying to go after my opponent's Opal or Diamond. I guess Diamond is better to kill with Foundation Breaker. Yeah, then my opponent only has one colored. I don't think I can beat if my opponent starts going, you know, lantern, um, lantern draw with Lurus. Yeah, I mean, I'll try my best here. I'm, I'm losing the game to a swamp, but this is giving myself a chance to, uh, to do something. Then I can deploy an elf. Wow. What a turn. Swamp makes my opponent laugh at my play and play, you know, Lurus, crack guide, play Lurus. I'm trying to set up a situation where I squeeze my opponent to sack the lantern. If they miss, they go down on artifacts. Okay, here's the swamp. I think that'll that'll do it shortly. Let's let's see if we can uh, do some miracle things here before calling it a day.
I have Chain Lightning in my deck. Cloud doesn't help because my mana doesn't cooperate. Here's Star. So Star was something... So my opponent... Wait, wait, wait. wait. My opponent could have gone. Tap Sapphire, play Star, tap for four. So let's see, let's see. My opponent is losing a little bit of mileage here, but... This is one of those games where that is highly unlikely to matter. I'm afraid. So, Chain Lightning? Chain Lightning is my out here. Oh, what is this? Dress down, end of turn. This is beautiful. This is beautiful stuff. Simply beautiful. Um, let's see. Hex Drinker. My opponent can keep doing that on their end step, right? Yeah, wow. Super sick. That's going to be good games. Can't do anything about that. That's, uh, that's amazing. My opponent can go end step, dress down, shut off my mana creatures. Shut off everything here. And <laughs> That's the best turn one I've ever seen. Let's see. Academy, zero, 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 zero even. Draw three. Put Lurus to hand, turn two, set up the dress down lock. Amazing. That's uh, the best thing I've ever seen. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen to me. So uh, that'll end my run here in the 64 qualifier. I loved every minute of it. And uh, yeah, getting to really show the potential of what can the absolute most busted things you can do. Um, yeah. And as I said, unfortunately, I was on the receiving end and not the other way around. But uh, yeah, that'll do it for the video. I appreciate you guys hanging out. I'll try again next week. And uh, yeah. Don't be a stranger. I'll see you around. Bye, guys.